the Duke and Duchess have spilled where they'll be heading for their first trip with the baby and it's down under. During a chat on Bondi Beach last Friday, Meghan revealed where the three of them would be holidaying. I would like to return to Australia. I'm hoping to come back with the three of us next time, Meghan told Kyoto Martin Shaw, founder of B.OK Ideas. Meghan also spoke of raising their child in a more positive environment. I'm excited to welcome my baby to a world that is more accepting of the conversation of mental health and to be an important part of the change of understanding the effects that mental health can have on friends, families and individuals," she added. The Duchess also revealed the one trick she would do every time she felt a bit sad. I used to hang a quote on my wall, what will be, will be, and I'd look at the wall when I encountered tough times, Meghan said. The Duke and Duchess were on Sydney's iconic Bondi Beach on October 12. Hundreds of people packed onto the beach on a murky day in Sydney to see Harry and Meghan. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex met One Wave, a local surfing community group, and took part in a session called Fluoro Friday. Members of the group wore colorful lays for the session which encourages discussion of mental health issues. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are expecting their first child, revealing the news just five months after their wedding in May. But what did the Queen give Harry just hours before the announcement was made public? Meghan Markle is pregnant, having released the news to the public early this week while on tour in Australia. Meghan and Harry revealed the next royal baby is on the way, destined for delivery in spring 2019. The royal baby was announced to the public via Kensington Palace on Monday to public celebration. Meghan and Harry revealed the news to other members of the royal family earlier the previous week, however. And Prince William and Kate, the Queen and Prince Philip, and his father Prince Charles were able to congratulate the happy couple at the wedding of Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooks Bank. Before announcing it to the rest of the family, Harry first told his grandmother, the Queen. Her response to the news was to provide Harry with a treasured position at her side. Prince Harry has been named personal aide-de-camp by the Queen, which bestows some big responsibilities on the Prince. The official announcement came from the court circular, which read, The Queen has been pleased to appoint the Duke of Sussex as a personal aide-de-camp to Her Majesty with effect from 13 October, 2018. The personal aide-de-camp position is awarded by the Queen as an official military role. Only people who have served in the military as a senior officer can take the role. And the position is normally awarded to royal family members. Primarily an honorific position, as aide-de-camp Harry will be a representative for the Queen at certain events, including the state opening of Parliament. There are certain ways of dressing for the role when performing these duties which for Harry will be wearing a golden aiguillette, braided rope. Set over the right shoulder and chest of a military uniform, the rope is distinguishing for that role only. Those taking on the position will be permitted to use post-nominal letters after their name, as one might with a degree or certain accreditation, of ADCP. Despite the announcement only being recent, people are already theorizing on future names. At the moment Harriet is trending according to bookmakers Ladbrokes. Harry's discussion about possible names while on tour in Australia prompted a flurry of bets forcing odd slashes from 66-1 to just 33-1. Alex Apati of Ladbrokes said, Royal punters will look for any giveaways over the next few months and Harry's recent comments suggest his firstborn might just share a similar name with the prince himself. Unlike his wife, whose pitch-perfect smile has become even broader since the pregnancy was announced, poor Harry appears to be in danger of evaporating in a welter of growing anxiety. He seems to have inherited the trait of an open-book face from his mother Diana and his expressions here suggest a man who is happily worrying for two right now. While Meghan sits confidently and elegantly, Wearing an open-mouthed smile of genuine delight at the proceedings as she raises one hand to make a feature of her wedding ring and drop earrings, 
Harry sits with his torso bunched up in a self-diminishing gesture that suggests subliminal fear or worry, staring away in a much more reflective mode and with a very weak smile revealing what looks like clenched teeth. His legs play signals new dad machismo and pride but the hard-shaped hand clasp looks nervous until Megan places her hand in his and rubs his arm in a gesture of reassurance. His face watching signals increased when they were out in the crowd and he sucked in his lips as he looked at his wife in another gesture of possible anxiety. It's easy to guess why Megan's pregnancy might have resulted in these signals of high anxiety. With no mother to confide his worries in and a sister-in-law who has been incapacitated by sickness during her first months of pregnancy, despite the fact that Meghan looks glowing with health and confidence, it's likely that Harry is currently asking her if she's really really okay? Several times a day. You can actually see that question hanging in the air above his non-verbal displays. A few months ago his intense eye gaze rituals with Meghan would have looked flirty and soppily in love but here he has added a telling head tilt plus a more serious eye expression to turn a loving gaze into a genuine query. He was probably also under pressure here in more professional terms. The opening ceremony of the games had just been delayed by a storm and he had a big speech to deliver in front of the eyes of the world. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have arrived on Queensland's Fraser Island as their whirlwind tour down under continues, with Prince Harry taking part in a traditional welcome to country ceremony as a pregnant Meghan Markle rests at a luxury resort. After touching down in Queensland on Monday morning from Sydney, the royal couple went their separate ways. The Duke took the barge to the island, which was reportedly refurbished ahead of the occasion, while the Duchess, dressed in a maroon, polka dot dressed by in other stories, arrived on a whale-watching vessel. Crowds had lined up along the Kingfisher jetty to catch a glimpse of the couple as they stepped off their boats, with both the Duke and Duchess giving a wave to excited onlookers when they arrived. During their time on the island, the couple will be based at the luxurious Kingfisher Bay Resort, which boasts secluded beach houses, timber lodges surrounded by the bush and deco-friendly hotel rooms. Prince Harry and Meghan earlier appeared relaxed as they boarded a Royal Australian Air Force jet at Sydney Airport, bound for the Wilderness Island, after travelling from Admiralty House, their Harbour City accommodation. Herview Bay Eco Marine Tourists posted a photo of the Duchess on their Instagram page with the caption, Very exciting day here today at the marina. The glowing Meghan Markle passing through on her way to Curry. Their Royal Highnesses are visiting Fraser Island or Curry as it is known by the traditional owners the Butchola people, as part of the dedication of the site to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, QCC. The QCC raises awareness of indigenous forests, and allows countries in the Commonwealth to exchange knowledge and ideas about the best practice for forest conservation. The Duke of Sussex later headed to Lake Mackenzie after the QCC dedication and meet with local elders to learn about the history of the island, before heading down to 75 Mile Beach as part of a busy day of engagements. Prince Harry took off his shoes and walked in the shallows of the lake after the welcome to country, where he had his feet brushed with leaves during the indigenous ceremony. The expecting Duchess of Sussex is foregoing her royal duties for the day due to the rough terrain of the island but there will be plenty for her to do even as tourist. Kensington Palace has confirmed Meghan will spend Monday relaxing at the resort, where the couple will spend the night but she is hoped to be well enough for a meet and greet with the public later in the afternoon. He spent a considerable amount of time talking to the local Butchola people who showed him around the world's largest sand island. The Duke was expected to take particular interest in his visit to the beach, as it served as a training base for an elite Z Special Force unit during World War II. The unit used the area to prepare for jungle and amphibious training ahead of missions into Asia and are credited with playing a major role in Australia's victory at Singapore Harbour. The ruins of the Z Force Commando School remain on the western side of the island, nearby the resort. While on Fraser Island, Prince Harry will also meet National Park Rangers to learn about the island's unique animal and plant life and its history of logging. Due to their famed toughness, Fraser Island's hardwood trees were used to build the London docks in the 1930s. Later, 
The Duke will head to Kingfisher Bay and walk along the jetty, hopefully with Megan. The couple are expected to be greeted by an enthusiastic crowd of fans, as tickets to cross to Kingfisher Bay have sold out for the day. Fraser Island is the fourth stop on the royal couple's Australian leg of their tour, after they visited Sydney, Dubbo, in the New South Wales Central West, and Melbourne. Following their visit to Fraser Island, the royal couple are heading to Fiji, then Tonga before a trip back to Sydney for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games. Their mammoth 16-day tour finishes in New Zealand. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.